Hey guys, what's up? Nakhshon here. A great video is about how you can take care of yourself. Some of it is by learning how to move and to train. Some of it is about how to eat well. And some of it is about how to deal with your emotions and develop very good mindsets for your life. <laughs> Today I want to react to Joe Rogan and C.T. Fletcher talking about is CrossFit bad for you? To be honest, I've been training I haven't done CrossFit myself. I've been training in a new gym for the past, I think three or four months. And it's a CrossFit gym and it's the only available one I have near me that I can train at. And they have an amazing facility with gymnastic rings and, uh, and free weights and everything. And it's, it's really comfortable and the facility is like really pretty and it just looks really good. And there's like a lot of space, which I really enjoy, but I don't really do CrossFit and it's not really my thing. So I want to see what they are saying what they have to say about about it. City Fletcher, I think he's a very old school, OG like fitness, I would say influencer because I think I saw him like years, years, years ago um, creating videos about, about how to train. So I think it would be interesting. And Joe obviously trains a lot as well. So yeah, let's get started. The Joe Rogan experience. And Avengers are out. <laughs> yeah, man, three hours long. Yeah. <laughs> Is, there's... Yeah, I stayed awake. I haven't seen it yet. I heard it's oh, great. Oh, I stayed awake. I heard man. it's great. Good enough to keep me awake. That's that's uh, that's saying something. From the I go to sleep all the time. Is it from the heart transplant? Are you sleepier now? You... No, no. I, I went to sleep all the time before the heart <laughs> transplant. <laughs> no, I wow. get comfortable. Fuck, and it's over. Yeah, the heart transplant. Yeah, yeah. It's I had no idea. Well, that's that's the often... lights are out. That's the thing too with people who train a Nobody lot. Nobody fucking with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you train a lot though, you're always ready to take a nap. Oh right? yeah. Because your body's always like recovering. Yeah. I'm out, man. <laughs> no problem. But overtraining is bullshit. You think uh -oh. overtraining is bullshit? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I know you don't. I think you, I, I bet you think that it's not bullshit, and overtraining is very real, don't you, Joe? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I knew you would say. I think overtraining is definitely real. I don't know if that's the right term though, because I've watched a video of, I don't remember this guy's name. He also creates videos about movement. He, he's really interesting. And in this video, he says that there's a new research that says that there isn't really overtraining, but too less sleeping. That if you sleep well enough, you can train basically as much as you want. The volume, the volume of your training isn't really the problem, but how well you rest, which is really interesting for me. But I still think there's such a thing as overtraining. Maybe if that's not the right term for it, but you can still train too much and put too much stress on your body. Now, obviously for the short term, I don't think you, you're gonna get the result, like bad results from that. I think it can really help you. But I think overall, like when you look at longevity for your body, training with so much intensity and for such a long time, I think it can really wear your body down. So I don't think it's a good thing, but uh, let's see what he has to say. And it probably connects to CrossFit, I guess. Yes. Say that. You know what rhabdomyolysis is? Uh, no, I, I have no idea. It's when you overtrain and you're literally your muscles start breaking down yeah. and you pollute your kidneys. Yeah. People die from it. Wow. That was a big ass long word. That, <laughs> and, and if you look in the dictionary, it'll say bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, there's under resting, under recuperation. That's true. But uh, mm. overtraining, no, if you get enough rest and enough recuperation, I think overtraining is bullshit. Mm, right, exactly but if you have to work out hard and then you have to work out again the next day and you work out hard the next day, that's uh, that's rhabdomyolysis piss. When you get rhabdo, oh your piss God. comes out looking like iced tea. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I don't mean the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's more than a rapper though right it's hard to say he's a rapper no, he's a rapper he's a lot actor of uh, yeah he's a cool dude yeah i yeah, mean he had cool. body count so that's a metal band so he has that too yeah yeah right actually he's cool um but yeah he looks like diet coke let's say that yeah that's fucked. what your piss looks like yeah that's fucked up yeah that's um that's what happens. And I train every, I work fucking eight hours a day, eight, 10, 12 hours a day at the post office, went to the gym, put in another four to six hours for fucking 25 years and my piss never looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean that if you train that amount of hours that you're gonna get, you're gonna get to that state of overtraining. I think 
what they're talking about that, that condition is about not just overtraining in terms of like training many hours but being extremely extremely intense where your body isn't really used to it i think you can get your body used to a lot of things and that is crossing the line but training four or six hours per day isn't that much to be honest comparing to professional athletes and a lot of people from the movement world i know who can even train eight to ten hours per day which is kind of insane but i do think that over some time over a long period of time it can put a lot of stress on your body and you can pay the price for it <laughs> yeah i think that's more endurance athletes and uh, particularly yeah. CrossFit. A lot of CrossFit people get wrapped up. Oh, yeah. Because mm. they're competing against other people and they get real wrapped up in it. And I got to ask Jason Khalifa about this. Good friend of mine. See if his piss ever looked like root beer. It's a real <laughs> real issue for uh, CrossFitters and like ultra endurance athletes. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the top CrossFitters. Guys. Is he? Yeah, he's like world champion two or three times. Those guys are ridiculously fit. Oh, man. Ridiculously I, fit. Look, I had him in, the, in my gym and I put him through my training. He was one of the, he did the shit. Like easy. it was nothing. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's fucking that guy. CrossFit and, they, and you know weight with this kind of laugh at CrossFit or something. Like that. ah, that's that's you know you know girly shit, man. It's bull. CrossFit and it's bullshit. But that motherfucker is in extremely good shape. Yeah, Cross. I don't know if CrossFit is not a girly thing for sure, but CrossFit definitely works on endurance a lot. Like that's the main focus. Like I've seen many people who do CrossFit who in, incorporate some gymnastics elements to it, some functional training into it, but the main goal of it is endurance and it overlaps and I would say overkills the other goals. So I see a lot of CrossFit athletes train, for example, on handstands, but because their focus, their real focus is on endurance, they don't really develop a good skill and they don't have high quality handstands usually like obviously there are people who I've, I, I know some people who come from the gymnastics world and then they did CrossFit so the handstand is really good or they spend more time on it or maybe they're just naturally gifted with handstands but most of the CrossFit athletes that I get to see they don't have very high quality movements and the form of their of their handstand and other movements isn't very good, but that's not their focus. They just focus on endurance. He also talked about ultra marathoners, I think. I think they are just on a completely different level because they just run for days. It's not even CrossFit when it's hours or like extremely intense. It's like they just run for days like straight, sometimes without sleeping even. And that's really crazy. But um, yeah, let's see what they have to say. They're definitely, it's definitely not girly and they are very very fit but again they look at their body as this tool that they can prove themselves through or so i don't really connect with it so much and i to, to be honest i hate <laughs> endurance work i just don't like it maybe in dancing i like it I, I like dancing and you have to have endurance if you're dancing so for that it's good but just the the goal of being of having a lot of them of being fit in terms of endurance is really not my goal. I just don't enjoy it. Yeah. Spitting is definitely not. Yeah, is that him right there? Yeah. Yep, it's him. definitely not bullshit. No. It's very hard. Yep. What those guys do is very, hard. very, very, very definitely. hard. Definitely. Yeah. The real question is whether yeah. or not it's good for your body. And that's where, um, that's where, and I, I'm not qualified just to judge, but there's a lot of people that are professional strength and conditioning coaches that frown upon it because they think that yeah. those kind of movements like powerlifting movements like clean press that kind of yeah, shit yeah. that should not be done for yeah. the maximum amount of repetitions they think that's really true but to be honest it's not like i'm not i have a lot of respect for crossfit people just for a few reasons i think for two main reasons one is that they made gymnastic rings much more popular and you can see them everywhere now so it's it's kind of convenient for me because I use the rings a lot. But the second thing is that they are really hard workers. They they work extremely, extremely hard and their mindset is very, very strong. Like they know how to work extremely hard and I really appreciate that. It's not my thing, but uh, I can appreciate. But it, it's interesting what he says about the, if it hurts your body. I think that should be done for power. You should, you know, you should hoist up your maximum or 85% of your maximum for X amount of times and that's it. Yeah. But what they're trying to do is just, you know, if Mike does 10, I want to do 12. Right. Mike does 12, I want to do 15. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, they think that 
And that's rookie numbers. They do 50 or 100. 15 is nothing, man. There's like Steve Maxwell, who's a pretty famous strength conditioning yeah. coach. He frowns upon it, and he just thinks it's just those movements are not designed for endurance. Those movements are designed for power. Yeah. He thinks ultimately it's detrimental for your body. I don't know if you can say if a movement is meant for something in terms of like if it's meant for strength or endurance or maximum strength or explosiveness. I don't really know. Maybe he has a better explanation, but I can definitely see that overusing your body for a specific movement, it just leads to compensations because at one point you just don't have the strength to do it. So you just compensate from other parts of your body. And that's usually not very good if you're not aware of it, if you're not taking care of yourself while you're doing it, if you're not preparing yourself to it very well. Because the, the biggest problem is that a, an active part of your body will be passive. Meaning, for example, when you do squats, you don't want your lower back to be passive because then you'll bend forward and it can create a lot of pressure on your spine and it can injure you. The same thing happens when you compensate a lot is that some parts of you aren't active because you think you're using, for example, if, if, you're, um, if you're shoulder pressing and you're not doing it from your shoulders and you're doing it from bouncing your legs, your shoulder muscles might be passive instead of being active in this range of motion and you can overstretch one part, you can put too much load on a bone, on a joint, whatever it is. That's really dangerous, I think. That's not very smart. And that if you want to have a long career in fitness and constantly be able to work out like deep into your 50s and 60s, he just thinks it's very detrimental for your body. Hmm. Yeah. Like it, Again, I'm I not the guy agree. to tell. Right, that's right. It's true yeah. or not true. And <clears throat> Me either. I'm sure a lot of these. I, I need to get but, one of those top level CrossFit guys. I know I've, I've gone back and forth with Rich Froning. Is that how you say yeah, his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, uh yeah. -huh. Online. But I never got him on. Oh, yeah. Got well, to reach out to him again. That, uh, I'm sure Jason would die to be on here. <laughs> but um, he is exceptionally fit. And, you know, the long term, I, I, I don't know because he's still a pretty young guy. Yeah, so that was the video of C.D. Fletcher talking with Joe Rogan about CrossFit. They didn't speak a lot about it, to be honest. And what he said like towards the ending, like right at the ending, was that he's a young guy. I don't think I've ever seen online any top performing or pretty good, pretty well performing old, I wouldn't say even old, like towards 40, 50. 60 is a bit of a stretch, but even 40 or 50 CrossFit at, I don't think I've, ne I've ever seen someone like that. And if you know, please share with me in the comments. I would love to see it. I think CrossFit is very interesting and it definitely challenges your mind and your body. And it creates amazing as athletes in terms of uh, endurance. But in terms of anything, everything else, I think it's lacking because it's not a very well-rounded method of training you focus really just on that. Maybe you have some specific workouts when you work on technique sometimes. And I'm, by the way, I'm sure there are high quality CrossFit trainers who make sure that every movement you do is high quality and you don't compensate from anything. Or I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are high quality trainers who really pay attention to that and they can prevent injuries and they think about the long run and they're amazing. But most of the trainers, most of the CrossFit trainers and athletes I'm not even saying athletes to be honest, like regular people who do CrossFit. I see so many compensations when they do their workouts and I see so many problems in that. So I don't, I don't know. I appreciate their, their hard work. I appreciate them doing something they love and that gets them going. I appreciate them moving and not just being a couch potato. I can definitely appreciate that. But the method, the practice itself, I don't really connect with and I think for the long run it definitely hurts you. Not to say that movement training doesn't hurt you. Like every type of method that you'll choose probably has some injuring aspects to it. Like everything has a price. And the the real question is not is not is it injuring but are you aware of the price you're paying and are you okay with it? So I do a lot of handstands and I know that for the very long term it's maybe not the best thing for my wrists and I'm okay with that because I really love it and I enjoy it and it I, I just love doing it. So for me I think it's worth it. But I think CrossFit is a bit over the top in terms of how much you sacrifice for your 
endurance goals. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about it. I think I would love to see a better video that explains CrossFit more and talks about the injuries more. So if you have any recommendation, I would love to see it. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can see other reactions like that and videos about how to take care of yourself. I do videos about movement training, specific exercises you can do to bulletproof your joints or just to learn how to move better. I do videos about how you can improve your mindset towards life, which is kind of a general thing to be honest, and also diet and whatever. Yeah, so if you're into that, make sure to subscribe as well. Anyway, have a good day and uh, peace.